Negotiating window. After the I'll write that down. Negotiating <laughs> window. Here is where we stand, at least in terms of what's happened today. The Browns have a new quarterback, a new wide receiver, and now a new running back. Former Niner Carlos Hyde, a three-year deal worth more than $15 million, but that is not expected to prevent Cleveland from considering Saquon Barkley in next month's draft. That did leave San Francisco with a hole at running back, and they filled it with ex-Viking Jarek McKinnon. He reportedly agreed to a four-year deal worth $30 million, a seven and a half per average that would make him the fourth highest running back in football. The Super Bowl champions kept one of their front seven pieces. Philadelphia linebacker Nigel Brandon agreed to a five-year deal worth $49 million. He took over play-calling duties after Jordan Hicks was injured in October, and that apparently worked out pretty well. The Giants made their first big splash in free agency, agreeing to a four-year, $60 million deal with former Patriots offensive tackle Nate Solder. His $15 million per year average would be the highest for any offensive lineman in the league. And the Panthers are bringing back one of their franchise legends. Julius Peppers agreed to a one-year deal with Carolina, the team that drafted him second overall all the way back in 2002. Peppers owns Carolina franchise records with 92 sacks and 31 forced fumbles. And then literally just a few minutes ago, the Cardinals making it official and this is a bit of a surprise I think they have released Tyron Matthew. Wendy I don't think it's that big of a surprise it's been speculated about because of his high cap numbers uh, there's going to be over 14 million this year they saved five million dollars with this move he's still going to count 9.3 million dollars against the against the cap now uh, so he even he has spoken openly the last couple days about the, the, the issues they were facing with his salary and they asked him to take a pay cut and he declined. And there was an offer on the table that would have kept him there in Arizona. And the interesting part now will be whether or not he can get more on the open market. Clearly, he's willing to bet on himself. He believes he'll get more money out on the street from another team. And so he told the Arizona Cardinals, no, I'm not going to take the pay cut. And they, in turn, now released him. Now, look, this is the way these sort of moves go down at the 24th hour. We're going to see Indomitian Sue released later today from the Miami Dolphins. That's another player. We saw Jordy Nelson released yesterday with Green Bay. These kinds of moves happen, and there are still more moves to come like that. This just happens to be the one that came down as we started the show with the Arizona Cardinals announcing that the Honey Badger has been handed his walking papers. So you think he's going to get more money? I'm not telling you he will. He thinks. thinks. That's the question, then. What do we think his actual value is on the market? Because here's a guy that can still clearly still make plays. I mean, it's not like he's not out there not contributing. Look, you know, you you get – in a situation like this where these kinds of things become self-fulfilling prophecies. Um, Sue was a big free agent signing a couple, three years ago. He's now going to be released. Why? Because the, the, now the, 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 it comes time to pay the piper. You, you got the backloaded contract, right. and he underperforms the contract at this stage of his career with injury and, and, uh, and time and grade. And the cap number is too high. The player doesn't want to take a cut, and I don't blame him. Why should he? And so they're out on the open market. Will either of those guys get what they were making? I doubt it, but well, we'll see. It's possible for them to get something in, in, like in the first year of that contract that might mitigate what they would have made here in the third year, base, or the fourth year of a deal, based on the, the way the contract can be spread over with the, with the signing bonus, right? Yes, you so it's, it's a chance it. to kick the can one more one time more for these time. players That's for exactly. one more big year, yeah, right? Or, or right. I mean, one more big year in, in terms of what? In terms of money? Right. Or yes. in terms of somewhere that you would like to? I mean, you got the, you got the power now. Do I want to go to somewhere where can't give me as much and they have a great shot at giving me a chance at something that's eluded me my entire career in terms of a championship? Or these struggling teams have more I think I'll go there because that's that's what I'm trying to get, that last big payday. What do they want? Well, either way, he's confident with his decision. He just sent me a message saying I'm good. So um, we're, we're messaging back and forth right now. But Tyron is someone, regardless of his injury history, that feels like he can still 
get it and done. Lewis, what, what do you see when you watch Tyron Matthew now? Not the, the Matthew of a few years ago, but right now. Well, he's still a multi-positional player, a Swiss Army knife of sorts that could play the nickel position. He could play the money position, which is the dime linebacker position down front in passing situations. He can play free safety. If you needed him to in a pinch, he could play corner. Not really where you want to play him anymore because of the fact that, look, at this point in his career, he doesn't have the same kind of speed as he had when he was younger. He's one of the great interceptors and great instinctive players Ball that this yeah. game has seen. So, yeah, he's going to have value on the open market, and he will find a job quickly. I mean, what's going on in Arizona? Look, this is a football team that is in okay salary cap shape, not great salary cap shape, that has a lot of issues on this football team that they really need to address. Namely, you sit here and you think about what they have done at the quarterback position. They better get an offensive line that can protect Sam Bradford. Otherwise, he will meet the same fate that he has met previously and that Carson Palmer met last year. They got their quarterback hit a lot. So Steve Kimes looking at this big picture. Okay, you can only split up the salary cap so many ways, right? You can't have an inordinate amount in one player when you have so many needs like they do. And they need to rebuild this roster. Now, <clears throat> now on, on Sue, <clears throat> we've talked about the enormous amount of money, but my sense leading up to today is there's something else, some other intangible that isn't about money as to why they are saying goodbye to him. Well, hasn't that been the situation in Miami for a lot of players over the last year and a half? I mean, Adam Gase is trying to clean house in a lot of ways with the, some of the players he's gotten rid of. I mean, remember Jay Ajayi was left because he wasn't following the system, and if it was a punishment, it worked out well for Ajayi because he won a Super Bowl. <laughs> Jarvis Landry was on the bus. Jarvis, Jarvis Landry Jarvis, was on the bus. Yeah. I mean, we're, Which, we're talking about a culture change, it sounds this like, is, in Miami. This has been a familiar refrain every time someone gets released out of there. Yeah. We were just talking about this yesterday. Yep. Every time someone That's gets released more. out of yeah, there, it's number three, culture, culture, culture change, culture shift, culture. You know what? And we've said it, I've said it numerous times. It's always at the extremes. You kind of find out what's going on behind the scenes. Because at the extremes here on the bottom end, when they're releasing high-priced players who they had high expectations for originally, it's always, well, it's kind of culture. It's always some kind of abstract reason as to why ultimately they release them, which tells me there's something going on behind the scenes there's down there. People aren't on the same page, There's man. too yeah. much churn. They're not on the yeah, same page. I, too much churn. Definitely, and I would say in the it's, case of Jarvis uh, Landry, too, just in terms of when you're talking about culture or the people are on the same page, you've got to look at the depth of the wide receiver position at that at, for that team as well when you're letting go of someone like that and then mm -hmm. bringing in someone that's somewhat comparable. So that's illuminating some of the things right now that you're talking about. Well, absolutely. Yeah. But there, there does come a point in time for an NFL team where the head coach has to force that culture upon a player. And that, cult, that, that, co that player has to not only respect the coach, but then also take that message and say, you know what, I believe what you're trying to do. Or you're just a head coach that some certain players look at you and say, all right, man, whatever. Yeah. Let me get right. out of here and I'm going to do what I got to do for me. So that head coach that can not only implement that culture, but get those players to believe. I mean, because everybody just get rid of in my get rid of them in Miami. Get rid of this guy. Get rid of that guy. When's a head coach going to take oh. one of these guys mm. and be able to say, you know, I can I can make you, Mold I can you. blend I can you into this. my culture, and you'll help our team. Two years ago, this team, the Miami Dolphins, made the playoffs. Yep. With a healthy quarterback. Mm -hmm. They made it on the last week of the season. Actually, their quarterback was even hurt down the stretch because Matt Moore had to fill in, right? Well, yeah, yeah Matt Moore had to play in the playoff game. Had, had, had their quarterback been healthy, Tanny Hill been healthy, they had a heck of a chance to win in the playoffs. And now all of a sudden it's being torn up. Why? I asked someone close to Sue basically what's going on with him in terms of where he wants to, to wind up, and they just reached out right now, and they said uh, – Basically, he's just looking for the highest bidder. It's not about winning for him in terms of where he's going to go. So that's what he's going for. The chance for him. I love the honesty. You know what? <laughs> Listen. Yeah, that's right. And, it is no, because there was yeah. a thought there. That maybe, you know, he's been paid before. Maybe he wants to win a Super Bowl now, which is why some people thought maybe he could wind up in New England. Maybe that could it's, be an is, option is, because that, you know, do a Darrell Revis. Get paid, why I love. Get, the, get the ring, then go back and get paid Get again. paid again. That's <laughs> why I love this season, this free agency season draft, because players, coaches, you eventually – you have to tell the truth. Yeah. All right. You, you see you what the truth to. is. Well, you, <laughs> you, you, you still see it. Limit. The yeah. moves you, know you make yeah. tell me how you feel or the way the players Please. select the team for money or is it for what, what is their inspiration? Is anybody, also, is anybody get, shocked, though, by mm -hmm. that right there? No. I mean, that's, no. that's the beauty. I mean, at least tell me, they knew that tell when me you where you Miami. stand. Tell me what you are so I know what I'm getting. Just you know watching. what I mean? Well, but you know what? The interesting thing about Miami is there was reason to believe they did know what they were getting and they made that move anyway and it's never been a fit. And you could see that coming. They tried, they tried to make some moves in order to get it set up to where he was playing the scheme he wanted to play and being coached by the people he wanted <laughs> yes. to be coached by, and it still didn't and work. It still you didn't still work. saw a film where you're going, what is that? Right. What are you doing 
relative to what you're being paid. So anybody, hey, buyer beware isn't even the issue with him anymore. Hey, it's like, go ahead if but, you but, want to. But you know still, what you are. There, That's right. there are still people who have to line up against him. I, I know we have to move on. Right. That don't like lining up against That is also oh, sure. No one does. Well, I, I, yeah. Because sure. he's so. supremely talented. But you never it's know where to win. Yeah. 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 And by the way, when you look at the free agent market that Sue is about to enter into, Sheldon Richardson is already out there. Don right. Terry Poe is already out there. And at this time where free agency has moved up and sped up and deals are in place, the market for those defensive linemen so far has not been fast moving for whatever reason. Very but short. There is some very definitive for, reasons for as to why. There, there isn't interest out there potentially in going back, potentially with Minnesota. So uh, we're just waiting for it to trickle down. And then I think that will but, also have an effect on what's going on. But, but, to, but to Adam's point, we're waiting for it to trickle down instead yes. of waiting for it to jump at that market, which makes it very interesting. So we have Sue and we have Tyron Matthew out there. Those are the things that happened today. Now let's get to how we got to this point in the negotiating window, as my friend Chris <laughs> Morton likes to say. Adam, let's start with Kirk Cousins, who negotiated maybe the litmus test for all quarterbacks going forward. Three-year deal, all money guaranteed. Well, Trey, the plan is for Kirk Cousins to go into Minnesota on Thursday. And let's point out here that the Vikings just opened a brand new training facility, state of the art. It's going to be beautiful. When Kirk Cousins walks in there, he's going to be blown away, as as who anybody who has seen it. And in fact, in Indianapolis, the Vikings officials were talking about how this could be a recruiting device for them moving forward. That's how nice the facility is. But Kirk Cousins plans to sign with the Minnesota Vikings. And who's, who's, that means by trickle down, we have Case Keenum going to Denver. Yeah, and that was the Broncos, I think, preemptive strike. Yep. Realizing that the money was not suited to their taste on Kirk Cousins. They went and got Case Keenum, somebody they, they had interest in before uh, on the trade market. Uh, and so they get the guy before Cousins even made his decision. And I think they're content with it. They still have young quarterback there and Paxton Lynch. And I'm, we're obviously not ruling them out of the quarterback market in, in the NFL draft. But Keenum gives them some security here, knowing that he can go out there and play solid football, maybe even above uh, solid football. We'll talk about that a little bit later, too. The Jets going with a double-headed sword here, Josina, in the young guy Bridgewater and the veteran Josh McCown. Well, you definitely have to solve the quarterback situation, and that has been an ongoing theme with the New York Jets. So right now, taking a look at Teddy Bridgewater to come in there, that's what it's looking like as of now. McCown was a stable force veteran for that locker room, particularly when people did not think that the Jets would go far. He had a good rapport with Todd Bowles was able to lead them in tough situations. He will be back in that role again as a transition quarterback and also to mentor the young guys as well. And then Lewis, all hail Tom Condon for the deals he keeps getting his quarterback, <laughs> Sam Bradford in Arizona. Hey, 20 more million in the bank, baby. We might as well go ahead and sign him up and go take him down there to Arizona. I'm just going to say this. If he's healthy, obviously we know what the talent looks like as far as keeping him clean in the pocket and then letting him, letting him deal. He can put the ball where he wants to put it when he wants to put it there as well as anybody in the National Football League. 52 sacks allowed last year by the Arizona Cardinals. He will not survive half of that number if he takes that many sacks. So they better find somebody who can play also in the event that he's not going to play. Right. He's not going to make it through the season. You can count on that. I don't know how their players to get up there high enough in the draft to pick a young one. Cardinals still have some issues at quarterback. If he makes it through this contract, he'll have made $134 million in his career. Nice. My goodness. Teddy, Bears giving Mitchell Trubisky all kinds of weapons. They are, Trey, and that offense for the Chicago Bears, that sort of uh, run-based, heavy ground and pound is not there anymore. I no. mean, Trubisky now with new coach Nagy coming in there over from Kansas City. They're getting him weapons and tight ends and Allen Robinson here. It's just going to be it's a young quarterback's development. You can almost just see it coming, just the future of it with the weapons, what they're thinking. Like I said, the truth. We want him to be that type of quarterback. Let's get him the weapons. Let's give him no excuses. You got the coaching. You got the weapons. It's all on true now. And then, Diana, it looks like Patriots uh, Southeast uh, with what's going on in Tennessee. It does. Malcolm Butler may not have taken one defensive snap in the Super Bowl, but it didn't seem to hurt his free agency market as several teams, including the Texans, the Saints, were all interested in signing the corner. But in the end, he wound up in Tennessee on a five-year deal, getting the money he was looking for, the money that Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots were not willing to pay for him and Deion Lewis the running back there beloved in New England he wanted to stay there but once again that number was just not right for him as he moves on and now becomes a Tennessee Titan and Bill the Packers active in free agency which has been very unusual over the last few years yes Ted Thompson stayed out of it they signed uh, Jimmy Graham who will be a perfect fit for that offense and he's going to make the quarterback very happy 
and Mo Wilkerson on defense, who is also a fit. The problem with Mo is he fits sometimes. He's <laughs> yeah. very, very inconsistent. Doesn't give you the best effort all the time. Now that's a little buyer beware scenario as well. Uh, he was really well until he got the big contract in the Jets, and then lo and behold, my goodness, the production didn't quite match up to the money anymore. And you know what? It started from play one yep. of this season. Correct. I mean, the very first snap, if I threw it on here and put it up here, you're sitting there going, what is going on with Mo? And, then and of he course, was the same way in college. The football and farmer is out of Green Bay now. The pieces <laughs> are falling in place for quarterbacks, but there are still some out there. What to make and how do you build that championship team? As we're in the player procurement season, people. Stay with us. <laughs>